Hi, I'm Patty with Studio R12 Stencils, and today we're going to show you how to turn a plain pine board into a celebration of your favorite sports team's colors and pride, and we are going to use striping stencils and learn some drop shadow techniques. All right, guys, the first thing I wanna do whenever I do multiple stencils on a project is I'm gonna dry fit. So what that means is I had an idea um, for our stencil for the football is that we would do it in the colors of our favorite team or um, local teams or school teams or whatever. Um, but what I wanted to do originally was put a stripe right down the middle of my board in the team colors. And so when I did that on the computer, I just did like a little mock-up. It was really busy. So then I wondered if we couldn't take our tea towel stripes. So this is a wonderful striping tool. Um, this can be made, this is the one I'm gonna use right here, but this can be used um, to do like team colors. It can be used to do um, tea towel um, accents in your home decor. Um, it can do just all kinds of things. It is a workhorse, but I wanna show you how to get it ready to use. Anyway, when I do a dry, a dry fit, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my stencil about approximately where I'd like to have a little edge show. I don't know if I'm gonna have room. So you always need to know these answers to your questions before you start painting. If I started with this stencil and didn't know exactly where it was gonna to need to be placed, it would be a problem. So I put this down and get a little bit closer here. Okay, so lay this down and see if I'm gonna get by with that W being there and having that, oops, I don't have it all the way on go. This is why you dry fit. And okay, that W will fit right there with a little bit of a reveal. So that's perfect. Now, one thing that you will notice um, with this, now I'm going to go ahead and mark. Oops, wrong drawer. I'm going to measure. So I'll know that the edge of my stencil needs to be four and a half inches from the edge of my board. So then what you'll notice with these is these are extremely floppy and kind of unwieldy. What I'm going to do to prepare this is I'm going to use a piece of something paper, well, not paper, wax paper would work really good. Actually, let's get out wax paper and do that. You can use the mylar, but then the mylar is gonna be sticky and then you have to clean that up. So now they just have something I can toss. So we'll lay this on top of our wax paper. Okay, let's get all this stuff out of the way. And I'm not gonna prep the whole thing because then that'll make these bits grab. One thing that you can do with this stencil, it comes all on one, which is really cool and you have a lot of options, but you could go ahead and just cut this one stripe out so that you only are doing one thing. And I think I actually am gonna do that. I think that's a good idea. So you basically have one, two, three, four, five, six stencils in one stencil from Studio R12. Okay, and remember when you guys are painting and doing all the things, remember to share pictures of what you've painted. We'd love to see examples. Okay, so now we're gonna take our tack, our foil, this is actually a foiling glue. There are two things that you can use that are pretty equal. Um, you can use the stick and restick or you can use the foiling glue. They're both from Aileen and um, they're both available on our website. But so you'll go ahead and spit out a little bit of, I'm gonna use foiling glue today because I've been using that a lot and it works really well. Um, I don't really have a preference. They may even be the same darn product. I've known some companies that have done that before. Um, let's go in here and look for a jumbo dauber. Okay, so I like the jumbo dauber because it's got a really big surface. And then we just make sure that we don't have too much. If it's glommy, then it'll stay sticky, 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 and you don't want that. You just want it to be tacky. So this will dry into a stick and re-stick situation. So basically it's like a giant post-it note. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and just tap this medium everywhere and then let it dry. Okay, so now we'll let this dry 
And then one last conversation about these stripes. Um, they are more trendy and more popular than you would even believe. You could put those stripes at the top of your top and bottoms of your stencil. You could run it through the middle of your word. Um, you can do so many things with it. So let your creativity shine and do some Pinterest searching and you'll find all kinds of great ideas. All right, we are painted and we are dry and it's nice and warm to the touch. If it's cold, it's wet. So make sure that your paint is completely cured before you move on. Okay, and I used, we're starting to reference some of our colors. So we've got number 13 and number 23, about 50-50. This was too dark and this was too light and another gray that we had was too blue. So I really wanted something in between. So I mixed them together. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to mark our line. Now this is the piece of mylar that um, has the stripes we're gonna use. And this is the tacket over and over. Oh no, this is the foiling medium <clears throat> was the one that I used. But notice that it sticks to my hand, but when I peel it off, it doesn't stick to my hand. There's nothing sticky here. It just will hold and do the thing. So it makes the stencil stay stuck down, which is super amazing. So we're gonna line this up. Um, I think I talked about maybe having a gray band, but I think I like the idea of not having a gray band. So I'm just gonna butt it right up to the edge and let that stencil do my measuring. So I press that down. I'm gonna use my triple threat Ghost Rider. This has got a white ceramic lead. It has a gray ceramic lead and it has a roller ball without any ink. So if you're tracing a pattern, you don't have to worry about inking up things. Um, so I'm gonna use the white lead and I'm gonna run along this line and I can see it. So we'll go up here, we'll butt this against the edge And I'm doing the inner line because this outer line is going to be a um, different color. And so I don't want to worry about butting up against that. And then the last little bit, we flip the T-square over and give it a moment. Okay, so now we want to use our white and we're going to use a masking tool. And the masking tool is simply leftover mylar um, that we have decided to offer for sale. It's just a really useful tool. So the white paint says almost gone. Sounded like a duck. Okay, so we use this giant guy like this. I'm going to lay him down there. We're going to line him up and we're going to tape him down. And that light color on top of this light color is difficult to see. Okay. Two pieces of tape. Always use two pieces of tape. If I tape in one direction, then the whole thing can move. Okay. And I think that's super, super important to know. And I'll line it back up. One piece and we'll go one piece over here. And now we can't move. So the jumbo dauber, because the surface is so big, it makes it really nice to be able to, um, to keep everything nice and um, flat and matte doing the thing. So I'm gonna hold on to my stencil gonna make this line. I want this line to be a little bit light. I don't need this to be a dark, heavy line. So we want light application. This is gonna give us our line for masking. And you can hear when you go to the hardware store. So um, we have videos that show you how to prep your board to mask for um, the knots that are in boards. And we have a video to show you how to finish your board. Um, but one of the things that also that you need to know is when you go to the hardware store and ask for the cuts, make sure you look down the skinny part of your board and look for any irregularities and choose your board wisely because when they're super 
um, uneven, then they can be kind of irritating, not just when you're painting them. <clears throat> so let me just go down the line. So when we bring our masking tool over here, we are going to want the black line to be the line that is outside of this line. So we just wanna make sure that we have good white traveling right here. Now I'm gonna move this down. I could leave it in place. I could pick it up. Look at how beautiful that line is. Um, one of the things that's super irritating to me is when you're dealing with fresh paint, I've done this this morning and now it's afternoon, when you're dealing with really fresh paint and you tape on top of it, you can have a lot of paint peeling that happens. So you want to be careful that you don't have paint peeling. And um, one of the ways to do that is to just use this giant sheet of mylar as your piece of tape. Okay, so we'll line that up. That's our one tape. Here's our two tape. We'll continue on down. Notice I'm feathering it out at the edges. I don't want any harsh lines there. So tap, tap, tap firmly here and then feather, feather, feather out. And now we'll take that and we'll put it into our water. I've already got three of those in my bucket of water. So we're already using this um, super, super fun to use this as a tool. Okay, and I'm gonna go into a roller. We'll to make sure that we roll good. When you're using your roller, make sure that when you're done with your roller, that you take it off of the handle and you store it in your baggie and put it off to the side. If you leave this on your frame and you let it dry there, then what will happen is this will start getting rusty and you won't roll anymore. So I always do a test roll um, <clears throat> just to make sure I've got good um, rolling. So we'll go over here. The neat thing about, we're using this Mylar sheet, so we're using this cut down as a palette paper. And one of the neat things about that is, um, is that they're washable, reusable, just like our stencils. And so you have something that you can have as permanent palette paper, no more throwing away paper plates, no more throwing away meat trays, no more throwing away any of that stuff. So it's super amazing, we're in love. Okay, so now we'll just roll lightly, no pressure. I don't wanna push because I don't wanna squish. So we just go down here probably going to take two coats. I'm looking to get rid of anything that is super um, like dark lines and stuff like that. Like when sometimes when you roll it's irregular so I want to make sure that I go back and attack the things that are just not covering so that I have even coverage. And when I roll, I roll over and over and over quite a bit. And sometimes I'll even push. I wanna just blend it into the roller. I don't wanna let it like capture a lot of paint. Okay, so just it's just gentle pressure. Okay, and I'll take this up. Now something to be super cognizant of. If you have a lot of paint that's wet on this edge, then you can have a lot of paint that will like scrape along your project. And so you wanna be cautious of this. I'll take this and just wipe back my project and make sure that I don't have a bunch of stuff. And you can see I did have some bleeding under and it left a little ridge. So now I've got that cleaned up. Get that nice and lined up. Okay. 
Okay, now we're gonna let this dry. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the blow dryer, get that dry, redo a second coat, and then we'll continue. Okay, my white band is dry. Um, I've got a big, tall fan that, and actually, let me turn that down just for noise. Um, I've got a big tall fan and I just stand the um, tall porch sign in front of that fan and it does a really good job of drying. It took about 10, 15 minutes and I had three coats of paint, so that was a lot. So I've got my tacky piece of stencil and I'm going to line this up on the edge of the board, but then I'm going to make sure that I can see just a feathery, feathery edge of the white and tape that down. Or not tape it down, but I'm going to push it down with the adhesive. Okay, we're gonna use a combination of the jumbo daubers and the ink sweepers. So I'm gonna dig in here. The ink sweeper is skinny and long and they're super amazing for doing like long skinny things like this. So I'm gonna go into my paint pick up paint, I'm gonna blob it off on my Mylar palette paper. Give it a squinch over here on the paper towel, just so we don't have too much bleeding. And even though this is adhesive, I wanna just go ahead and be gentle. And we wanna always feather at the very top. Do not go to the end. If you make that strong dark line, I almost always forget not to do this, so I always say it and then I always forget. If you go to the strong dark line, then it makes a really hard place, a hard line to feather from. So you wanna make sure, ooh, hi. You wanna make sure that you do not, okay, I'm gonna get this under control. Do not do that hard line. Okay, and then do not bump your project as you're painting. Okay, so we'll continue. I'm really giving it a soft, if I start lifting, I'm just gonna go over here and just grab it and hold it down. The adhesive is more for keeping things from shifting around. Um, it's not to keep it like taped down. And by doing scant amount of paints, oh, ha ha. All right, so don't do this where I just did this is I did not bring this all the way down to the end of the project, I'll have to patch that. So I'm not going to worry about it right now, but I'm not gonna take it down to the edge, I'm going to feather it. You could tape of this. Um, I loathe, hate, and just, just hate the idea of rows and rows of tape. I have fairly fresh paint. I can have chipping, I can have peeling, I can have all that stuff. So I'd rather move up my project and take a little time. Taping takes just as much time as using a stencil. So um, I prefer this method. If you love to tape, go for it. Um, all right, now we're gonna go over on the far edge. Oop, and I just did it. And we wanna always feather at the very top. Do not go to the end. <sighs> Every time. Rusty was like, don't do it. You're gonna be fine. And then I did it anyway. Okay, it'll be fine. I'll show you how to fix it. And then we want to avoid doing that hard line down here. I'm telling myself as we go. All right, now we'll go back up the other side. These ink sweepers, um, I've got to tell you, they are magic. They really, really do a good job of making even coverage I'm gonna stop on that one. I'm gonna pick up my dauber, jumbo dauber. Red is a tricky color. Red does not like to base coat. So um, red will be a little bit harder. I'm gonna feather up here, I'm telling myself. So I wanna kinda of hold it down as I go. And then we'll hold it down on the other side. Side. Red always takes a couple of coats. 
See if I can get both sides at once. That's a good technique. Okay, I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. And feathering just means that you do just a scant amount of paint to do um, to feather against um, your edge. All right, back into the black. And now I've loaded this a couple of times, so now I'm going to make sure to blot on the paper towel. Not wiping it off, I'm just kind of pushing to blot a little bit. Okay, so we'll go back over here. Make sure I don't lift. Now here, this is different because this is off the edge right here. And sometimes you can load from your kind of discard pile right there. Okay, I'm gonna lift this and just check. Eh, I gotta do the red. Okay, we're gonna finish the red first. And I'm gonna need to blow dry. So uh, make sure that you're taking drying time. Um, your stencil can flutter when you're doing your drying, so make sure that you're just kind of holding it down just a little bit and maybe don't use high speed. All right, now we're ready to pick up our red. Our red is number 18 and our black is number 28. Okay, I think you're gonna be good. Now we're going to peek. So we'll lift this up. And we see this beautiful, beautiful lines. So that is perfect. Now I'm going to slide this down, give it a dry, and then I'm going to layer this up from here and I'll show you how to begin, but then I'm gonna finish it off camera. Okay, so we've got this dry. Now we're ready to lay our stencil back on top. And I guess we'll do it in the same direction as it was before. These are laser cut stencils, so they're extremely precise. And then we will continue. And in the area where I made a dark line, you can see this is feathered. This will just pick up just like that and it'll be fine. This one, I have to take just a hot moment and give myself a little bit of a bridge, let it dry, and then move on. Um, so it's just important to feather it, let it dry, and then move on with your project. All right, we have our stripes done and they are dry. And now what we have to do is line up our welcome. So we wanna make sure we have the same amount of space here and here, and we do not right now. So I've got it lined up. The C is common on both stencils. So that's a really nice way to line up your stencil. And that W is a big W. So we wanna use the W as our test and then we can take our T square and we can measure I'm not straight yet but we can measure not it's an inch and three quarters here and we are two inches there so we'll boost it up just a little bit and that should be about right and now what I tend to do for myself is I'll use straight edges on my stencil to line things up. So for instance, this line right here, and Rusty, I don't know if you can get this, but um, these stencils are not lined up right. I've got a wide band here and it starts getting skinny, 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 and then gets wider. So obviously these guys aren't married together in the middle, but if you use your straight edges for your straight edges, it helps you tremendously to keep things lined up. So I'm gonna get this even. And then I'll make this even with that. And ta-da, I'm probably a little heavy down here. So I'll slide that in just a teeny bit and then we'll line him back up. 
And that is where we're going to stay. So we're going to take a couple of pieces of tape. And what I'm going to do, I need my football to be white because otherwise I can't do my lines and it looks much better on my mock-up to have the lines be white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top stencil away and I'm going to tape the top and the bottom of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to base the C and we're going to base the football. We're actually, we're going to trace and base. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, and then that will give the C will give us the placement for the top because we want to do a drop shadow. And so the drop shadow, you need to have the placement put in place for you to slide it out and over. And I'll show you what that means. So what we're going to do for the football is we're going to trace it through the stencil. So stencils um, are also called templates. And a template is something that you trace to give you the lines with. And I'm just gonna peek and lift and see, make sure. Okay, and then we're going to base our letter C. So we're ready to base our C and our football. Um, the football is gonna be done, well actually, you know, I just had a brain storm. We're gonna use our jumbo dauber on this football and we're going to go ahead and base it all the way around. Give it a little, little accent trace here just to give it its lines. Where I really need it to be based is in these areas that are marked. So by marking it with my paint, which is super easy to do, and I'll do the same on the C. I just wanna mark that C. Just faintly. When you do the drop shadow, it's super a pain in the butt to do the drop shadow over completely base coated lines. So you wanna just do a hint of the line. So we're gonna take this away. And so really I didn't even need to trace that with that, um, the little ghost writer. Okay, so we are gonna use our multi-masker. We're gonna use our white. And our glasses and we are going to hmm, see if we can figure out okay I'm just gonna have to do this a little bit at a time or just kind of go flat across that and then we need to go straight down the middle because that's where the stitching is and we want that stitching And a feather to each side. Lift that. Oh, that did a good job. This multi-masker is amazing. You can use it for a million things. Okay, that one's not as perfect. Don't think I lined it up as perfect. There we go. Okay, wipe that off. Do my other sides. Go back down the middle. You could freehand the stitching, but that would be kind of a drag. Oh, that one's perfect. And again. I always wipe off the back because you can get little residue things 
from your stencil that you're using. But I think that might be that. Let's get the metal. And that goes into the paint container. I'll get this dry. We are dry and I'm ready to put the drop shadow on. So what you do with drop shadow, um, and we're not gonna do the football, but what we do with drop shadow is we line everybody up and we make sure that our line looks nice and even. And then we drop it down and over. You could drop it up and over or any one of those combinations, just do it consistently to the same side. And because these letters are kind of heavy, I'm gonna do the drop shadow a little bit heavy. I'm gonna go for a good like almost quarter inch and then I'll drag it over. So what I should be seeing, is I should be seeing about a quarter of an inch here, a quarter of an inch here, a quarter inch here. And then this line should stay nice and straight. And I believe that we're good. Now what we're gonna do is the drop shadow is black. So we're gonna go, this is like a jumbo dauber project. This is kind of cool, I like this. We're gonna ignore the football, but we're going to do all the letters. Okay, so we'll go over the letters with thin black. And because we have um, a light color going over a dark color, so we base the whole thing. You could base part of it, but if you left some of it off, where the white covered with gray would be a different color than where the white covered with black. And so you want to just go ahead and cover the whole thing with the black and that way you have consistency. The Jumbo Daubers make such quick work of this stenciling. And you really are not pushing hard. And I love that it has like a nice fingers out of the way place. And um, we have these on Studio R12. And make sure if you're enjoying the kind of like painter hacks that we're doing here that you make sure to subscribe and ring the bell on our YouTube channel so that you can be notified when we have new content. Now we've got these base coated. I'm gonna lift them up, give them a peel, and we're gonna dry our stencil and we're gonna dry our lettering. Okay, I've replaced my stencil onto the top of my board. We're gonna find a lovely brown color. All right, so we have the stencil acting as a mask where our white is. So that's gonna give us our white lines that we wanted that we don't have to freehand. I've mixed a color of pigskin with six, oops, nine, um, 17 and 44, kind of like equal, equal, equal. So we'll hold this down because there's Nothing sticky on this one. So it's gonna bounce around a little bit. pebbly texture of this project is working really well on the football. I'm going to press out this color and I'm going to put out just this dark color. And we're going to do a little fancy trick. And that is we're going to load one side. So I'll just do the top side of this in this dark color, but I'm on a dirty applicator. I'll hold things down and I'm going to run that dirty applicator side all the way around our football and feather it out and that's going to give us a shadow without doing any fancy shenanigans. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, even though I don't need to remove this right now, I am gonna go ahead and remove it so I can get the football nice and dry. I'm gonna continue on with my drop shadow up above, and then I'm gonna come back through and put my final coat on for my letters, and then we're gonna be done. Okay, I took off the stencil and I have a teeny bit of where I didn't quite line up and then I have a little bit of light color right there. And I'm gonna just go ahead and tap that away using the lighter side of my applicator. I'm gonna pop that in water. And then what can you do if you have that little bit of something going on? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use a flat brush I'm gonna load it in this um, dark color, and then I'm just gonna run it right along and just feather that out. And then that took that away and then problem solved. That happens when you are lining up your stencils, you wanna really pay attention to every single quadrant. A lot of times when I'm lining up stencils, I feel like I look not intelligent and um and that is because you have to check every corner and then the minute that you move one thing it moves the other thing and then it moves the other thing so you really have to take your time and make sure that you are lined all the way up okay so now we're going to put the stencil on the top to get our drop shadow finished and we're not going to show this on the camera but you're going to know that this is the same step that we took down here and so to line that up, we're gonna try to line up every quadrant. And sometimes it's just something that's canted a funny way or whatever. It's interesting to line it up. You really have to play. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. Now I need to check this line. Do I feel like, and I'm gonna check that line as well. Do I feel like I'm pretty straight? Feel pretty good about that. So we'll give that a tape. I do feel like I might be slightly canted that way. Now I have to check this. And here's something interesting. My W is going into my taped lines. Okay, so I know that I'm slightly off just a little bit. And that's gonna be that drop shadow. The evil drop shadow. Well, drop shadow's just gonna have to run through my colors. So when you do your dry fit, you have to take the drop shadow, we slid it over, so what did we do? We slid it right into my stripes. Hmm, there's not much I can do about it right now, but I think it's gonna look just fine. So we're gonna leave it and we're gonna see if there's anything, any adjusting that we need to do. All right, so this is dry. These are dry. We're going to line the bottom stencil up with the white that we put on the C. I'll use my tape as a little lever here. The football is a really good indicator as well. That gives you a really good idea of when you're really centered. It's amazing how easy it is to just tweak that. Okay, I wanna look at my long stripe. Decide if I think I'm good. And this one's right in the middle of that letter that I already just base coated, so I'll move him over. And now we base with white. My white is almost empty. We have a um, paint chart that should be released when we release this video um, that will show you all of the colors that we use along with conversions and some value information and stuff like that. Um, that is on our website, studior12.com. Super easy to paint along and be able to just see the colors that we're using. Okay, so now we're gonna go on here and we're going to do a soft pounce first. This is like a layers game. So if you try to cover it all in one pass, you're gonna make a big junky mess. So you're much better off to do soft light pounces and just get it masked first
And then once it's masked and dried, then you can do your second and third coats. It probably will take three. Just because black and white are so hard to cover over each other. Hello. Make sure we're still all lined up. All right, we're dry and ready to reveal. Here we go. La! Oh my goodness, this is amazing, you guys. I am super excited how, about how this turned out. Um, the stripes look fabulous. The drop shadow is wonderful. The football with the shading, I love every bit of it. I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video.